Okay, this is uh, part one. I just finished the introduction, uh, basically explaining why I believe deep water culture hydroponics is the best. Um, this is, the, I guess, part one. Um, and in, in this volume, I'm going to explain to you uh, how you would go about setting up or getting your uh, deep water culture hydroponics system started. First, I'll just go over the parts uh, real quick with you. You know, I hear people call, you know, so many parts, so many different names. And also, I'll tell you some, some things that I think are better than what's commonly used today. First of all, you know, uh, you have your reservoir. Your reservoir can be pretty much anything that holds water, you know, non-toxic or whatever. Um, so, now this is your wet reservoir. Um, and then you would have your air pump, some sort of air pump like this one here. Now, when you choose an air pump, you want to make sure... Your air, a lot of people ask me this question, so that's why I'm saying it. Um, when you choose your air pump, you want to make sure that your air pump delivers at least two to three times as much uh, air pressure than your uh, reservoir. For instance, uh, I believe this is a two and a half, three gallon uh, reservoir. So I want a pump that's going to pump, you know, um, 10, 15 gallons of air pressure or or an air pump made for a an, uh, an aquarium you know that much bigger two to three times bigger or more uh, you can't go overboard on your air so the more air the better the more air you get you just turn basically turn your system into an aeroponic system almost but anyway so then you so you have your air pump then you have your airline as you see here and at the end of your airline that's going to be inside your reservoir inside here you're going to have your air stone now your air stone you want to get a good one you want to get a heavy one this is this is pretty heavy I think this weighs about almost half a pound six and a half seven ounces almost you want to get a, um, an air stone that gives off a lot of small bubbles you don't want big bubbles you want as many small bubbles as you can get so get you a good air stone Next is your uh, net pot. This is called a net pot, or some people call them mesh pots. Okay, and then you have your. Um, some people use rock wool, but rock wool uh, can cause pH problems. Anytime you see people using rock wool, you always hear them start with, you know, uh, adjust your pH of your water. Uh, this is a starter plug. It's made from composted tree bark. It's a lot better than rock wool. It's pH neutral. This is where there's a hole in the top. You probably can't. Yeah, you can see it there. There's a hole in the top where you would place your seed or your cutting or your seedling or whatever. And then the last thing would be your clay pebbles. Uh oh, clay pebbles that everybody calls clay pebbles, but they're actually called hydrotin. Some people call them hydrotone. So that's the basic parts, and that's all you'll need to start your hydroponic system. How you sprout your seeds is uh, up to you. I think um, sprouting them and then what you do is you, you know, you lay out a napkin, fold it a few times, um, wet it really good, put your seeds inside the napkin, fold it up, put that folded up wet napkin in a Ziploc storage bag. And then you want to put it somewhere pretty warm but not hot. Uh, say for instance, uh, sometimes I use in the winter time. Sometimes I use the top of my cable box. If your cable box gets too hot, which it shouldn't. You can put like a washcloth or a towel over top of it, then put the seeds on top of that and then put a towel on top of that, like a sandwich. And uh, when your seeds bust, you can put them in your uh, rapid rooter plug here. Um, you, I don't know if you can see that water, I have a water line here. What you want to do is when you fill your reservoir up initially, you want to make sure that your water level comes up at least halfway on your net pot. So you fill it up pretty much. That's why you want to put your hole pretty high up on the side. Um, and then I'll, I'll just let me see if I can do one here. I've got some plants that I've already started. Here's my I'll put it in the back here. Here's my net pot, and here is let's see here. Here is a very small ghost pepper plant. So I'll just show you exactly how I do this. So basically, I'll set this in here. Center it. Then I have my hydrotin. 
Then I just surround it, make sure you get it evenly surrounded with hydratin. Obviously I already have nutrients in the water here. I did that earlier. And I use rainwater so I don't have to worry about pHing anything. So that's 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 about it. So basically you want to make sure that your water level is at least halfway up on your net pot when you start out. And you want to keep it there until your roots get say three, four inches. That way you'll get a lot, you'll get lots of roots coming out of your of your uh, starter plug here. Then once your roots get long, you can drop the water level a little bit during your vegetative state. But basically you want to keep it filled up as much as you can. Now when you go to your blooming state, then you want to drop your water so at least half your root mass is exposed to uh, just the air. So that's basically how you would set up uh, a basic deep water culture system. Um, if you have any questions, I can be reached at uh, gmailafrica35 at yahoo.com or you can also give me a call at 513-371-6586 or a text. And I'm going to do a series of videos and they will be offered on one DVD. The price is going to be $7.99 with free shipping worldwide. Uh, and that video will go on sale. Um, I think it's going to be available on the 15th of January. So this is part two. Part three, um, I'm going to discuss uh, lights. And part four, I'm going to discuss nutrients. And part five, I'm going to discuss uh, just uh, tricks of the trade. So thanks for watching my video and please stay tuned for more.